Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are going to do a fast and loose tonalist watercolor landscape painting utilizing Daniel Smith burnt yellow ochre. Uh, it doesn't matter what pigment you use, I'm just going monochromatic and just having fun. Um, if you have light red oxide, Venetian red, those are all fun ones. Or grab some burnt umber, grab some ultramarine, experiment, and paint along. I'm using my quarter sheet, Stonehenge Aqua, 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press. I just thoroughly coated it with water with my large hake brush. Now I'm gonna take my medium hake brush and start painting in my scene. I'm using an approach derived from what I've seen modern tonalist watercolor uh, tonalist oil painters use Dennis Sheehan Stuart Davies where they take their oils they mix it with a thinning medium pass their paint over the um, smooth canvas uh, smooth gesso board and then just wipe back and forth and just create the image. I don't recall the stainability of this pigment, so it might inhibit some of the lifting that we can do, but we'll experiment and we'll just have fun. It's kind of a, hey, it's Thursday, one more day till the weekend type of day, what type of painting session. Before this, I experimented with some printing ink and a piece of plastic and some paper and tried some mono printing, monotype, sorry, it's monotype. So check that out and check out the other experiments. And you're always welcome to follow along, to paint along to just have fun. That being said, I've been updating the Etsy. The Patreon has a lot of exclusive content up on it now. Also some early access. I also have the Kofi and the Kofi account down below. So if you want to support this channel, I have a whole bunch of ways and a whole bunch of um, different things for you all to check out. There's tons of free content up here. So simply watching, liking, and subscribing helps this channel as well. With this approach, I do find that I use a lot of pigment. I put out a fresh dollop of it, and I'm putting out another fresh one. So it makes it a little bit expensive when using the, I guess you'd say Premier oil paints, um, stuff from top of the line, Daniel Smith, Holbin, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce some of the other ones, uh, Windsor and Newton. But if you do this with Van Gogh brand, Da Vinci brand, Cotman brand, which is Windsor and Newton's uh, student line, you'll get great results as well. And you'd be less hesitant to pour out large quantities of paint. So we're building up the tonal values, going from light to dark. In fact, I'm gonna throw some in the sky and then just kind of wipe it back. That's thunder in the background. It's supposed to be a farmer's market this Saturday, but with the way the weather's looking, I don't think that's gonna happen. Letting the scene create itself. You can use a whole bunch of different tools to help you out. I think we're gonna stay pretty minimal with this. But I wanna throw in some wet and wet trees. 
this will soften and diffuse. Actually, if I remember correctly, trees like this or application like this dried pretty dark in the, um, the initial experiments with this pigment and this paint, but that was uh, about two months ago, so I really don't remember too much. Did so much exploration with portrait and other materials. It's always fun to kind of step away for a little bit and then step back. Though I was thinking today how I want to continue with the portrait experimentation and how I can fit that into everything. Looks like an S-shaped composition wants to occur. And we'll have a bend in this river here. Hopefully you can see that starting to form with this being our closer bank. We have the far distant trees and then we'll have our closer, kind of the other shore right here. We're still in the wet and wet phase. pull the reflections down and pass it over the top. Very Bob Rossian, just a very easy way to create your water. Using thicker applications, they're still wet and wet so it is going to diffuse. Not really feeling um, scraping just yet. A lot of my scrapes have been uh, falling victim to backfilling and being darker than I wanted during the dry off phase. So we'll push it till it's a little bit drier and then scrape from there to pull out some highlights. It's a great approach to learn your pigment and tonal values are always so much fun. Monochromatic is always just so much fun. There's no worry about getting the color right. There's so much that can be learned. Then adding a pigment or two, playing around with warm and cool. You only need a few paints. Say uh, the two artists that I referenced in the beginning, Dennis Sheehan and Stuart Davies, they use two or three paints in the oil starting out. And with Fast and Loose Painting with Ron Ranson, his palette was six or seven colors. And there's, um, there's a lot of other minimalist palettes out there. I think Velazquez was one of them. I don't know too much about Velazquez, but um, I believe did the Zorn palette develop from that? Sure. Okay. So let's put a little bit more pigment in. I 
then I'll see where we're at scrape wise. a little bit. Let's get the texture so it's not one mass. The granulation of the pigment does help. Let's see where we're at scrape wise. I'm going to scrape the foreground just so that if it backfills and it's dark, it sits forward. Well, that's pretty good. This is with a round edge of a card. The sharp edge is pushing back to white as well. So let's put texture in now. Pull out white trunks at this point. So playing around with the moisture levels can really affect the lines and the mark making that you have taking place. I want to bring this forward more. using the flat side. All right. Let's pause this and we'll do a dry off and we'll see how it looks. All right, some areas feel a little damp, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna put out some more pigment, more paint. Yep, Percy Poo, we're gonna put out more paint. I wanna try to hit some more darks now. Let's see, I wanna grab a little bit of water, just the edge of my brush. Thunder is rumbling, so. Well, you never know down here. You can get rain, you cannot get rain. It could be perfectly beautiful. And it could rain five minutes later. Right, let's get this going here. Probably explore a foreground tree. Or maybe not. We'll see. So, so far, the, the school year, the work year has been going pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I told you all that I'm teaching business math, financial math and advanced math this year. So I have the juniors and seniors that are either going to a career or technical college after they graduate, or the seniors who are looking to go to a um, community or four-year college. 
So that's a pretty exciting group. Eventually, one day, I'll have an art class. I think I want to leave this light. At first I was thinking about putting that in heavy. We'll just work our way forward. The thing with the monochromatic is just kind of keeping the texture going for me. That's just my approach while also trying to get those tonal values and sometimes it's a little difficult sometimes it's easy but I try not to have too much of a mass of one value Some of these areas where I just put in, they're still a little wet, and there's a fact that I've talked about in the past that Joe Menza had pointed out to me uh, from handprint.com was referred to as bronzing. This was a heavy application of pigment that created a sheen, a leathery type look or feel to it. and. I believe that is occurring in some of these areas, especially because I'm using it pretty much straight from the tube and just dabbing it in. Um, I don't have any qualms with it. Some people might. So if you're getting that effect, uh, they just know what that is and what's causing that. It's just the, the high quality is just sitting on top, essentially. But I'm trying to push this from all the way to light or dark. And the reason I had started mentioning that is that it's drying almost a darker red than it looks on the palette. And this is a earthed source pigment I believe so there would be variation within it so I don't know if that would be causing it but I think I'd mentioned earlier that the scrapes and other things had dried pretty dark in the previous tests if I remember but then the question would be how do I get those long running dark bronzing lines if I want to utilize that. Mm -hmm. Just thinking out loud. That's all this is. So let's pause this and do a quick dry off. All right, so we did the dry off. Um, the areas that started bronzing and drying dark uh, seem to stay about the same. They're probably still a little damp and might move a little bit if I was to touch them, but just going with the flow. During the quick dry off, I did have one idea and thought though. Within Chinese brush painting, they'll have ink or solely ink paintings and then Chinese um, watercolor, which is kind of like a gouache. It's very uh, thick and opaque, and I believe it's either animal glue based or peach sap glue based. There's something in it, but sometimes the translations are a little different. Like a weasel hairbrush is translated as a wolf hair 
Um, so they call it a wolf brush, but it's like a mish, it's the way it translates, even though it's from a, a weasel. Anywho, um, I do recall videos of Mr. Henry Lee one that I watched for Chinese brush painting. Mix his ink with the um, the Chinese watercolor, and not like painting first with ink and then painting watercolor on top, which he did, but literally mixing the ink with it on the palette. And that might have a lot of interesting possibilities. Now, well, we'll cross that bridge down the line. Maybe one day I'll throw some India ink alongside and we'll mix it in real time. That might be a good experiment for a monochromatic painting as well. Maybe a follow-up to this one using India ink in addition to the, um, the watercolor. Another nice addition might be white gouache, which helps the opacity. It might be, I guess the phrase would be like dealer's choice, like up to the uh, painter and if you like it aesthetically or not. So then you can potentially get the chalkiness, but you can layer back to a lighter color. That might be you know, white, black, and uh, a monochromatic. I wonder if at that point you just use gouache in that color. I guess for me, painting is a lot of questions and little problems and solutions and then more questions and more solutions. Kind of like if you're teaching a kid, okay, so if we have one plus one, we get two. And then the kid asks, what happens if we have one plus one plus one before you, know, you get to that topic? I think that's where my mind eventually goes watercolor in any type of art. And what I personally enjoy about art processes. That and the relaxation aspect. These tonalist paintings, monochromatic paintings, um, I, I call it tonalist because of not just the monochromatic but just the feel overall, just the, um, the moodiness and the vibe and the atmospheric effects and the texture and the brush strokes. All those things compound to why I consider myself a tonalist. But yeah, just the, um, the relaxation aspects of this approach it's just so nice. You find yourself having a long work week. And you find yourself saying you have no time to paint. That's the best time to sit down, pick up the brush, and paint. Let's do a dry off and we'll sign it. All right, I'm going to sign this with a. Um, Kor and Noor. I'm sure I'm always pronouncing that wrong, but that's what it is. With platinum carbon ink. So Rapido metric. Thank you for watching. And of course, you're always welcome to follow along 
You have my express permission to sign your name to anything you do when you follow one of my videos and my express permission to sell anything you do whenever you follow one of my videos. I want you guys to be successful and to have fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm working on a different schedule uh, with uploads. I have all the different content all over the place on Patreon and on YouTube. And I'm looking at, it looks like maybe Sundays is the day I'll look at for going live and doing some live broadcasts and live chats. On that note, thank you and have a great day.